Welcome to the interview on France 24. We're sitting today at the American Embassy in Paris for an exclusive discussion with Senator John McCain, a former Republican contender to the White House and top member of the Senate Armed Service Committee. Senator McCain, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me on. Changes um, to the national security team are on their way. Uh, General Petraeus is expected to replace Leon Panetta at the CIA, and Panetta will replace uh, Secretary of Defense Robert Gates in a few days. Um, is this a wise choice? I think so. Uh, and by the way, as you know, this is not official. The president has not announced that, but that's what seems to be the case. And I think uh, uh, especially General Petraeus is very highly qualified. Uh, I would have liked to have seen him as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, but the president has that prerogative as to what, to, as how to choose his team. You've met with whom you call your heroes, Libyan rebels in Benghazi on Friday. Uh, president Sarkozy uh, will visit them soon. Um, are you surprised that President Sarkozy took the lead of the coalition in Libya? Isn't it the role of the U.S.? Well, I'm very grateful that uh, President Sarkozy and Prime Minister Cameron especially took the lead. Uh, the uh, Qaddafi forces were literally at the gates of Benghazi and would have been able to perpetrate a terrible massacre if they had not been stopped by British and French air power. So I'm very grateful for that. And yes, I would like to see more United States involvement. I'm glad to see the Predator, the unmanned vehicle now in the fight. Uh, but I also think that it would be uh, a, at least some way of preventing a stalemate, which I'm very worried about, if we had more American air assets in the fight. And by the way, I am opposed, as the French government is, to sending in ground troops. Can you topple Gaddafi without battling on the ground? I think you can if you devote enough air assets. We'd have to train and equip the uh, rebels. Uh, I like to call them the liberation forces. They need communications equipment. They need weapons. They need a lot of things. But Gaddafi is a third-rate military power. He has no real support from the Libyan people because of the kind of dictator he was. So. Um, I am confident that they could get him, it could take him out. You said a couple of days ago that NATO allies didn't have the will and the assets to topple Gaddafi. Do you think that Americans partner, America's partners sorry, are too weak to get the job done? I think American uh, air power could uh, have the beneficial effect. And I also think the American people, as long as we're not putting troops in on the ground, will support the struggle of the Libyan people. Their struggle is our struggle. The, we, we at one time in history, in our history, had the same kind of struggle. So I think Americans are very sympathetic to preventing this kind of terrible stuff. Gaddafi today is shelling the port of Misrata, killing innocent people intentionally. That shouldn't happen. Now you're saying that Bashar al-Assad has lost total credibility. Um, the U.S. are trying to find some way to condemn Syrian leaders. Do you think that the U.S. should intervene in Syria, but can America afford a war, a new war there? I don't see a way that we could intervene militarily, and I think it would be very risky, and I don't know if we could stop the terrible, as our president said, horrific behavior of Bashar Assad. So we need to enforce sanctions. We need the Security Council and other organizations to try to bring as much pressure as we can on Assad. But finally, let's not have any more illusions that this guy is a reformer. He's a brutal killer. No illusion. He's a killer. We're going to go back to the domestic politics, if you will. Um, President Obama went on camera this Wednesday to address the so-called birth certificate case. He said, quote, we do not have time for that kind of silliness. We have better stuff to do. I have better things to do. Doesn't Donald Trump have better things to do? <laughs> I'm sure that Mr. Trump enjoys the publicity, but 
I agree with the president. We have high unemployment. We have the debt and the deficit problems. We have the, we're in wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. And so uh, it's, it's, a, it's a silly distraction. And uh, I hope now we can focus the attention on the American people, of the American people, on the challenges that we face. With all those wars that Barack Obama had to face since he was elected, I'm talking about Obamacare, the government shut down, uh, this birth year thing. Um, are you happy or not sitting in his seat? <laughs> um, I, of course, I have some sympathy with the president because of the many challenges that he faces. Uh, I, on the issue of Libya, this is one area where the president and I strongly disagree. When I was in Libya last Friday, there was a ship that came in from Misrata, and it had people on it and had a lot of wounded young Libyans. I went to the hospital. I saw them dying there in the hospital, terribly wounded. I won't describe to you. And I was deeply moved by it. And I want us to do what we can to prevent Gaddafi from slaughtering additional young uh, Libyans who are literally sacrificing their lives for freedom. Is Obama beatable in 2012? I think so. Uh, I don't think you should underestimate the president. He's a very excellent campaigner, as I, as I well know. Yes, but I'm, I'm confident that my party will select an excellent nominee and we'll have a very exciting election. I know you're not going to endorse any candidate at that point mm -hmm. of the campaign, but we're seeing numerous names of willing to be president looming from the right, uh, names and candidates that you've been almost run with uh, back in 2008. I'm talking about Tim Pawlenty or candidates that you ran against, thinking about Mitt Romney. Um, do you think the GOP have the will and the assets to challenge Obama? I'm confident that we will, and this is a good process, and it, you emerge from this primary process as a much stronger candidate than when you begin. Uh, some of our candidates are former governors who have governed successfully. Maybe this time the American people are looking for a record of success and accomplishment as opposed to rhetoric. Coming to governors, there is one governor you really ran with back in 2008. I'm talking about Sarah Palin. Um, do you feel that putting Sarah Palin on the national scene, you might have created a political monster? <laughs> no, yeah. I think Sarah Palin is a very influential person in the American political scene. She's very popular with a lot of my party. I think she's contributed a lot to the national debate, and uh, I'm pleased to have had her as my running mate. And I would point out, after she agreed to be my running mate, we went up in the polls. People have a tendency to forget that. She was very helpful and for the candidate, for my candidacy. She was helpful. She helped you to raise in the polls. She also raised, uh, helped the Tea Party to raise in the polls. Um, Does the Tea Party ejected the GOP? No, I, th I think the Tea Partiers are people that are very upset about the physical situation that we find ourselves in. That's the focus of most of their attention. I'd like to get their attention on issues like Libya and others, and I try to do that. But uh, they're an important part of our party, and they're an important part of the American electorate. And I th still think they can decide elections. They can decide elections. Um, you run against Obama, obviously, in 2008. Uh, what are the qualities it takes to be a good candidate to the American election and presidency? I think one of the qualities, believe it or not, is you've got to be resilient. You've got to take some blows. I know of no campaign that didn't take setbacks, and the candidate who eventually succeeded came back from those, uh, from those setbacks. You've got to be prepared to take some, some defeats uh, along the way. And I think, second of all, you've got to understand that it is a very, very rigorous, arduous process. But it's worth all of that effort and you'd better be prepared to make it 24-7 for as long as it takes, right up until the polls close on Election Day. President Obama is trying to raise $1 billion for this election. Do you think he'll make it? I think he probably will. I regret 
that you know we used to have a system where you limited the amount that you would raise in return for receiving some money from the government. Uh, President Obama chose not to do that in the 2008 election. So now no candidate will do that. They'll just rely on money. And I think you're going to see money play a much bigger role in elections in America in the future. And I'm not sure that's good for American politics. Can money buy votes? It certainly can affect a voting public if you have an overwhelming advantage financially. Thank you, John McCain, for having taken the time to be with us today on France 24. Stay with us. More need to come on France 24.